By the end of this video, you are going to know so much about candlestick pattern reading, you will never, never look at a line chart again. This is my hope. But in all seriousness, most inexperienced or new traders start out by looking at line charts, but they don't understand the information that they're missing, which you could get from easily understanding how to interpret candlesticks and candlesticks on a chart. Now, I don't have anything against a good old fashioned line chart like this. In fact, this is probably the first thing you're gonna see when you look at Yahoo Finance, you see the CNBC ticker scroll by, you see a chart like this, in some capacity looking back along a period of time. And that's great. Get in the market, start understanding what investing is. And the advantage to this kind of chart is that the information is highly compressed and all you need is a quick little peek to see the daily closing price. You can see where it's trending, see where it's going and see where it may go in the future. A rising line up to the right like this indicates a positive moving stock. A falling line down to the right indicates a negatively moving stock. Now these line charts, they're pretty simple. They work by posting the closing price every single day. You can see the number moving up here in the top, every calendar day on a graph, and then just joining them with a line. That's how the representation of the data looks if you have a daily chart on. Obviously, if you go to weekly or monthly, the data is gonna be showing one month of data versus one day or one week. That's all that changes. It gets plotted the same way and connected with a beautiful blue or whatever color you may choose line. The disadvantage, it's a big one. It's one you cannot see on a line chart. There is a battle going on in the background between the buyers and sellers moving this stock price higher and lower and higher and lower. There's a tug of war. There's a rope back there and they're pulling on it from both sides. You can't see that in a line chart, which is the one drawback and the one large drawback from this type of chart. Thankfully, candlesticks were invented back in the 19 whatever in Japan, and they are now home to a lot of expert traders, head street wall funds, your grandma and her retirement savings. Everybody uses candlestick charts, so you should too. Now candlesticks, they are further broken down and they contain more information, again, of that tug of war between buyers and sellers that you just can't see on this line chart, right? There's a big difference, there's more data getting displayed, and we're gonna get into that and what it all means as we go through this video. Make sure you stay tuned to the end because I'm gonna tell you exactly how to look at these charts and interpret what a big candlestick means, what a small candlestick means, what a pattern like this means. You're gonna get it all in this video, so stay tuned. But before we do that, we have to understand what encompasses and what makes up a body and a wick in a candle. So when you have all these candlesticks, each one represents one day again, but we have to go back and check out what they mean. Big time shout out to buybit.com for this great graphic showing you the different parts of a candlestick. Let's get into it here. Looking first at the bullish candle or a green candle, okay? The body right here, you can see that, and then you have what's known as a shadow. When you see the word shadow, also think wick, just like John Wick, or more frequently, a wick of a candle. I like to think of John Wick because he kicks ass and he's a cool guy doing it. Here we go. The body of a candlestick is going to be right here. And as you can see on a bullish candle, it's going to open low and close high. The price goes up. Think of a bull lifting its horns and thrusting into the air. That is a bullish candle. That is the body, okay? The price opens down here and rises up to the close at the top. That's a green day, meaning the market or the stock went up. When you have a bearish candle, you have the body over here, same as a bullish candle, but you've got the open up top and then it closes lower, meaning that the bear's paw went trying to swipe down and pull that price down. That's why you get the bearish candles with the open up high, the price down low close, the bear swipes the price lower. Think of it that way, okay? So green for good and that's up, red for bad and that's down. And now we can look at interpreting a candlestick wick or shadow. And all these upper shadows, these are the same for both bearish and bullish candlesticks. As you can see, this upper wick will give you the high of the day and the high of the day. The lower wick or lower shadow as it's known is gonna give you the low of the day and the low of the day. So if the price goes from up here at the open here, right here, 
goes up, maybe it comes back down to the low and goes all the way back up to this high, then closes somewhere around here. You can see there was a battle going on between the buyers and sellers, which is why it touched all these different points. But the body and the wicks tell the story of a candlestick. Here's what I mean. When we are interpreting candlesticks on our chart, the length of the wicks, okay? The length of the wicks tell us exactly how far the stock price moved in any given trading day. So for this example, right here in the middle, this candlestick right there, okay, you can see there's a long wick on the upper and a long wick on the downward moving a very small body in the middle, okay? The wicks tell us 439 to 433 was the total price movement that day for the SPY. This is back on June 14th, 2023. The next day we have a body that's very large, no wick on the bottom and a little wick on the top, meaning the price started down here at 436, went all the way up, never got below that and finished the day a little bit higher at 442, ultimately topping out at some point during the day around 444, okay? So the length of the wick is the price movement in total for the day. And the length of the body is showing you where the price opened and closed for green or opened and closed for red, bearish and bullish, all right? Now, when we string these candlesticks together, we can see the same data plus more that we could on a line chart. If I take my pencil here and draw this in, the line chart, when I flip it on, it's gonna look something like this, okay? It's gonna look very similar to this. Boom, 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 okay, like this, then like that, then like that, then like this, this, up, up, nice uptrend. And we're going to be somewhere like that. Let's flip it over and see how we do when we combine it. Not too bad. My drawing skills are a little bit off with the squigglies, okay? But that's exactly what it's going to plot for you. But you can see that on the line chart. You can also see it on the candlestick chart once you understand how to read the bodies and the wicks. And why we use candlestick charts again is because it produces more information than just a standard line chart. We get the wicks. We can see where the price went up, went down, got bought back up, got sold back down. We can see more info than just a plain old line chart. And it's that kind of information that traders want to know, which makes candlestick charts the go-to choice when it comes to trading stocks. So to really understand candlestick charts in full, we need to understand the strength of a candlestick. And it really, again, helps you think about it if there's a tug of war going on between the buyers and sellers. If one side is stronger than the other, you're going to get a trend in a single direction. If it changes and the other trends reverse, you're going to get a trend in the other direction with your candlesticks. And if no one can kind of get an advantage in the market, you're going to have an area like this over here where you kind of stay in the same location or kind of stay stagnant for a little bit, meaning everything is equal in terms of strength of buying and selling. So why does this happen? Why does this dance between the buyers and sellers occur? Well, it's because when you get to an area down here like this, you have buyers and sellers both making bets that the price of this stock is going to go down and the price may go up. When there is more buying in the market, that kind of pulls things up. This rope gets tugged on more and the price is going to increase when there's more buying going on. If there's more selling going on, you're going to have a direction like this happen. And when that kind of evens out, you may get a pivot point like you can see right here. With any momentum in a trend, eventually it's going to run its course and run out. In this case here, we'll show you a bullish example where there's more buying going on. Okay, the price keeps increasing because there's more buyers lifting it up or the bull is thrusting its horns up. So the green candlesticks, remember, there's an open, then a close higher, then an open, then a close higher, then an open, a big candlestick, and a close higher. But eventually, all that buying ends up taking the price to a technical level. I'm gonna draw it in here with yellow at this level up here where just nobody else wants to buy anymore. The price may have gotten too high. So eventually you can see with this red candlestick over here, the price gets too high and the sellers resume control over the market. If you really zoom in on this candlestick right here, okay, I'm gonna clear all these drawings out for you. And if we really zoom in here, you can see at the very end of this uptrend, Okay, 
The price tried to go even higher on this trading day. That wick represents the price moving even higher and the sellers or the bears saying, no, 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 we're not going any higher than this. This is the limit. 444 is as high as we're going to let it go. That's too attractive of a price. And the, and the rest of the buyers said, you know what? We agree with you. We're not going to buy anymore. It's too inflated. And you can see where this pivot point happened. This big red candlestick with the open here the next day, the close down here started a new trend where more sellers emerged versus buyers taking this downward into this area down here. So if we have our tug of war, and this is the line you have to cross, right? This is our rope over here. We've got one, right? Two. These are the best people I've ever drawn in my entire life. Three here. These are the sellers, okay? And you've got this rope. And you've got the buyers over here. And there's going to be a little bit of a flag on this rope, let's say, right there, okay? And you only got one buyer over here. Which way do you think the rope is going to get pulled? Three over here are probably going to win, unless this is the world's strongest person, right? So the selling is going to take over this way, and the stock price is going to sell off when that happens. If you can think about candlesticks in this way, you will put yourself ahead of 99% of the recreational traders out there. On the flip side, if you have one, two, three different buyers over here pulling on this rope, right? And there's only one seller, which way do you think it's gonna go? It's gonna go back this way. And then if you have buyers and sellers that are equal, let's say you got one V one, best on best right here, pulling, best on best. And let's say that they're twins and they have the exact same strength ratios. This seller and this buyer, the twins, this flag in the middle, it's not going to go anywhere. And that's represented in the market when things are equal or balanced. You get trends emerging kind of like these candlesticks down here where the stock doesn't really move around too much because the buying and the selling pressure or pull is pretty much the same. So that's strength of a candlestick. Now let's look at the size of a candlestick body and uncover some secrets that that produces. And as you can see, this is just a little bit of information that goes a long way. You've got none of this. Again, none of it. When you're on a line chart, you've got the closing price and that is it. You get so much more of the story and the battle when you look at the candlestick chart. So I hope you're getting some value out of this so far. If you are, smash that like button for me and keep helping this channel grow so I can keep pumping out content just like this. So the size of a candlestick body, when you have the tug of war, right? The increasing strength in one side can really be determined and we can see it where the stock is likely to move by interpreting the candlestick body, okay? So a long candlestick body, just like this right here. You've got short one, short one, short, short, short. A little bit of indecision there as well because we've got longer wicks on either end. So there's kind of prices going up, it's going down. The selling and buying pressure is the same. Then we got boom. We got big hoss, big red in the middle there, big old bearish candlestick and the body there. The body is got body karate. It is crazy, okay? What I'm talking about in all seriousness is that this body is super long. It's way bigger, right? The size of this red candlestick, I'm just gonna draw the outline of it beside it. There you go. That thing is humongous relative to anything else beside it. So you can see that and interpret that and say, hey, this candlestick represents a whole bunch of selling pressure relative to the past few days of trading that we've had which means that this is likely to kind of go down in the future if this selling continues. You don't know for sure, but that's what trading is. You make best guesses based on data like this. So if you see this, and it's a big old body of a candle, right? We don't have a bearish candle with a long wick, then a small little body like that, and then a wick on the other end. It's all body, right? It's all body, meaning that the price started the day at a certain level, okay? It started up here. There's a little wick where it started to go back a little bit higher, but then something changed and the market just said, nope, free fall down here. It pushed it a little bit further down. Buyers kind of stepped in a little bit and then pulled it back up to here. But that is a strong day of selling, which is represented by the strong body of the candlestick. On the flip side again, over here, we've got a green candlestick, okay? And I'll just move this over so you can see a little bit better. We've got a green candlestick. And we've got the same kind of thing happening. We've got 
a little bit of indecision here. We got some longer wicks, right? One, two, three, four, last couple of days. There's this large bearish trading uh, single right there with this candle. So maybe you think it's going lower, but then it kind of rejects based on this wick. Dark doesn't know where it wants to go. And then boom, again, you get a solid green candlestick, all body, all going upwards. It's a good bet, a good signal that this is likely to continue for a few trading days at least. That's what you have to give it some rope, some leeway. And you make that assumption when you start seeing these candlesticks manifest, you'll start recognizing patterns that much quickly. Jumping over here and showing you another example of this. When the size of the candlestick body increases, that's also a very positive sign for the trend continuing. Here's what I'm talking about. You've got this green candlestick down at the bottom here, okay? You've got a price of 413 up to 415 and change. We'll call it $2 a candlestick. So that's a twoer, okay? Boom. You've got another one the next day, 416 up to 418, boom. That's another twoer, okay? Those are the best twos I've ever drawn, no lie. Then we got 419 up to 422. That's a three X, a three banger, okay? Boom. Then you've got this one up here, 426.5, 435. That's a four banger. Boom. So the size of your candlesticks are increasing. That's the body, right? The bodies are increasing. Those are all almost straight bodies with some small wicks on them. When you see the body size increasing and the trend keeping in play, that is a good predecessor of the trend continuing as well. As we can see here, because I can pick this at random and show you exactly what I want to show you, the trend did continue in this example, but this is what I'm trying to illustrate. This body of the candlesticks continued to grow from two to two to three to four. That is generally a trend that is going to be in play with increasing size and movement in the stock price. That works the same bearish and bullish. If I saw the red candles here, let's go 434. 430, that's a four banger, right? Okay, can't draw four right now, there we go. Next one, 431 to 426, that's a five banger, okay? 426 to 420, that's a six banger. So that's the size of these red candles are doing the same thing. They're increasing downwards and you've got the same trend kind of moving downward, a little bit of a pushback up here by the buyers and then it resumes downward again, okay? So the size of the body and the trend line of the body and as it increases is a sign that it is moving in the right direction and it likely to continue. Conversely, again, when you get out to this topping out area, we go from four right here. And when the body size of the candlestick starts to decline, it may be a signal that the price is about to kind of make a change or shift or take a breather. We go from four, two, two, three, four, up to 433. 434, so almost a one banger or a one and a half banger up here, right? On this candlestick right here, okay? Then we've got almost no gain on this guy. We've got a little bit bigger gain there, no gain there, really bearish. And then we have kind of a reversal candlestick right there, which is what I'm talking about. When you see these kind of candlesticks losing momentum in this terms of the body of the candlestick, you have to be wary of a potential reversal. It may not reverse straight to a market kind of sell-off down here, but like you can see, it kind of went down for a day. Then the buyers picked up steam again and kind of moved this thing higher again. But you can see these small, small candlesticks and even indecision candlesticks leading to a lot of different kind of trends or potential change in the market. Track that when you're looking at candlesticks and you will understand where trends may be going with strength and when they may be kind of fading away in areas just like this. Let's talk now about the width of the wicks. The width of the wicks. There's a tongue twister for you. Width of the wicks. And let's find a good batch of wicks to deal with here. This is a good spot down here if I've ever seen one. Okay. So the width of the wicks, it really helps you determine the volatility of a stock. Okay. And volatility just means the likelihood of a stock price going up or down. If there's a higher volatility, it's more likely to travel up and down at greater lengths or expanses versus a very short wick, which means volatility is a little bit lower and the price isn't inclined to move as much. So long wicks, like we have right here in this example of candlestick, this red Jimmy right there, that's a great example of having indecision in the market, okay? Or just the bears and the bulls and the buyers and the sellers are trying to pull this thing in opposite directions and they're trying to go like this and no one's budging, okay? It's still pretty even, Steven, in terms of the body being small and there's up and down and there's a bunch of price movement happening, but no one can gain an advantage. 
What this is telling you, a candlestick like this with super long wicks and a really small body, is that there's going to be a move. It's an indecision move. So we don't know where it's going to go. So we have to take almost the next candlestick as kind of the sign, hopefully, as long as it's a good, strong candlestick, like this green one was. That's a pretty bullish candlestick right there in terms of a lower wick kind of rejecting and moving higher and closing higher. But this candlestick tells us there's a move that's potentially happening. We're not sure where it's going to go, but there's buyers and sellers competing for the move. So we kind of take the next couple candlesticks and make our decisions based on those, knowing that there's volatility kind of pent up in the market from this, and that we could unleash that up or down, moving out of a candlestick just like this. When we have shorter wicks, really short wicks, there's a really small one on this candlestick right here. You can barely see it on the top there and a pretty short one on the bottom there. Those are signs of a market or a stock that is in a fairly stable movement or trend because it's just straight body going up, right? It's likely that that's going to continue as well just because there's no kind of sellers taking this thing lower. It's just buyers slowly kind of creeping up, creeping up, creeping up on this stock candlestick right there. No one else is coming in and pulling the rope to their side. It's just kind of a slow, easy descent which means the trend is likely to continue up higher. And the same thing when you're looking at a bearish candlestick, just a red one. If you have one, I'll find one right here for you to take a look at. This is a good example here. You've got a short wick at the top on this candle, no wick on the bottom, meaning that the price kind of went a little bit higher or tried to get pulled higher by the, the bears or by the bulls rather. <laughs> Chicago bulls are pulling up higher. And then they moved back down. Jordan missed the shot, missed the free throw. And they moved back down and sold off. Okay, the next day, same thing, very small wick, trying to move things higher, didn't happen, sold back off, went back down further. Even this candlestick has some small wicks, some indecision right there, but still kept moving down in the direction of the trend because it's just straight body, 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 which is a good indicator of the trend, like we've said, is in place to continue moving forward. And as you move through a trend, oftentimes what you're going to see is the size of the wick start to change, just like the candlestick bodies are going to change, right? We talked about that. The length of the wicks are going to change as well as you get closer to a pivot point in the trend. You can see small wick, small wick, small wick, even those two, boom, big wick. Okay, that's our first notification and kind of bell ringing that this may change or may flip to a different kind of trend in the stock. We have another kind of indecision candle beside that one. Another really kind of even candle right there saying that long wicks, again, very small body. Something's going on. There's a battle being kind of fought evenly right now, but there's pent up demand and volatility for a spring to potentially move in a different direction. Maybe it goes higher, maybe it goes lower. It really depends who wins that next day. We can see that the buyers won that next day and a kind of small mini buying trend was the result of that moving forward. So two more things to touch on here, and then your masterclass on candlestick chart reading will be complete. You will never look at a line chart again. We're looking at the body to wick ratio and just reminding you that in a strong uptrend or downtrend, right, these wicks and body ratio, the body is going to be super big compared to the wick. There's a big body, big body, big body, okay? Then when you get to an indecision or a point of potentially flipping, the wicks start to creep up just like right there. Right, And then when you resume a trend in the opposite direction or even the same direction, you get big body, big body, big body karate again, again, with the big wicks coming in after a direction has kind of been chosen and maybe topping out or bottoming out. So understand the body to wick ratio. When the trend slows down, the wicks increase. When there's a strong trend in place, there's going to be a one-sided short wick or no wicks at all driving this trend down further. Turning points and just pivot points are phased by wicks long on both sides. And then once things flip, hopefully you get a nice strong bullish or bearish kind of turning or pivot point where a new trend emerges that is kind of marked by new strong big candles upwards like this one. And then you kind of just take it and you go and you start looking for these patterns in your chart reading. When you see the wicks, when you see the bodies, you know what to interpret and you know what the kind of trend is about to do or, or maybe more inclined to do. Of course, nothing is guaranteed when you're looking at candlestick charts or stock charts in general. And the last section, the big old thing to bring it all home is the position of the body. Okay. So there are three positions we need to know when we're looking at the body of the candlestick. One represents bullish markets. 
One represents bearish markets and one represents neutral markets or a market that's kind of moving sideways with no kind of clear, distinct winner or loser taking hold. When we see a candlestick, and let's just scan through here and find a really good example for you. I don't want this to come off as too fast or too kind of wishy-washy. We're going to find a good one for you. We're looking at the position of the wicks to the candlestick body itself. And there's a good one right there. Zoom in, baby. Okay. So if you see a long wick like this that sticks out of the bottom of the candlestick right there, okay, what that is saying is that there was an attempt on this candlestick's life. No, I'm just kidding. Bad joke for you to finish off this video. No, this is saying that there was an attempt to push the market lower, okay, by the bears. They're trying to swipe this thing down. So the stock price opens here at 406.93. You can see it on the right side. It got pushed back or pulled down to 405.36. And then the bulls came back and said, or the buyers came back and said, there's no effing way. We're letting the price sit here. We're going, boom, we pump this thing all the way back up to 410 bucks. So that there is a really bullish and strong sign that there's a rejection of a lower move, okay? And there's a higher move potentially coming after that rejection. So you're looking for that long wick out the bottom on one side only. I don't want to see another one up here going like this. That again, would represent indecision. We don't want to see that. We want to see one-sided wick down at the bottom, push the price higher, boom, the buyers take over and pull this thing up in a bullish move. As always, on the flip side, if you've got this red candlestick with a long wick on the top end, right, and no wick really on the bottom, you've got a clear sign of the market or the buyers trying to take this thing a little bit more high and take it back up to this higher kind of good positive trend. The bulls are trying to push it higher. The bears are saying, no chance. We're swiping this thing down. We're clawing at this, bringing the price back down. Okay. And that's where you get the close of the price right there. This right here is a clear rejection candle. And if you can see that end sticking up again on one side, that is a bearish sign where the stock may go lower afterwards. Understand that, what it represents in your trading. And the last one is that when you get, again, we've touched on this a little bit, but we're going to just bring it home with this, is that when you see two, two wicks of kind of equal size, and you got a couple examples right there at the top, equal size wicks almost right there, equal size wicks right there, okay? That represents indecision. Honestly, you could say that about pretty much all four of these candlesticks. They're kind of all indecision candles, but that one right there is a big one. This one right here is a big one as well, though it is kind of moving a little bit higher potentially given this small body and the smaller wick on top. But those are indecision candles and those are signaling to you that there is a battle going on. We don't know where the price is going to go next. So again, as I've said, when you have that scenario, you have to take candlesticks after and after to kind of understand where the trend is likely to go. Both the buyers and sellers are trying to pull this in their own direction right there with no clear winner. So take the next candlestick or two and understand really where the price may go in the future. So by now, you should have a solid understanding. And if you don't, maybe you were asleep. Maybe I was too boring. Maybe you got caught up doing something else, checking your fantasy sports. I don't know. But you should know why most traders use candlestick charts versus line charts and the more information that is given. You should know how to interpret candlestick charts, including reading the bodies and the wicks. You should be able to understand the wicks, the bodies, and their size ratio when compared to each other and why the position of the bodies relative to the wicks and vice versa matter when you're looking at the trends in the market. Practice reading and understanding this information and you will put yourself again ahead of 99% of the recreational traders out there who think they know what they're doing, but they really don't. They're just making their best guess based on their latest subreddit post and their latest trading copycat. So do this, subscribe for more deep dives, keep investing in yourself. Thanks for watching and I will see you on the next one.